I think vocals are one of the hardest parts of a mix to have like a set approach on. I mean, there's always going to be things that you do similarly every time, but there's so much that's dependent on the specific voice of the singer and also what kind of, what range they're using and what dynamic they're singing in. So this track that we're using for the masterclass has both a very aggressively sung kind of almost screaming chorus and then we've also got a very softly sung verse. And those two things require quite a different approach because the human voice generates very different frequencies. Um, you know, the harder you sing, typically the more treble heavy, the more presence your voice will have. When you sing softly, it can always have way too much body to it. Um, so there's definitely a lot of extra precautions that need to be taken when you're dealing with vocals. And, you know, here the vocals have been presented beautifully. Robin did an amazing job of singing, editing and, and presenting these vocals for the song. Um, but if he hadn't done so, and let's say if these verse vocals, which are sung very softly, were grouped on the same channels as our pitch screamed leads, you might well want to separate them onto new channels so that you can process them differently. Let's get stuck into the strongest part of the song, the chorus, and we'll look at the techniques which I've used here to compress and EQ and process the, uh, the main pitched lead. So Robin tracked his voice with a little bit of compression on the way in. You can see even just visually that these are quite nice sausages of audio. They're not uh, super dynamic and all over the place. Now, part of that's also that he's a really good singer that's great at maintaining his volume, you know, controlling the volume of his voice. Uh, but a little bit of compression on the way in is often my preference, just so that the, uh, the voice is not completely raw once I start mixing it. He's provided me with a main voice and then a double and a triple. So he's recorded the same part three times over and has lined them all up so that it sounds like one big voice, essentially. He's also given me a low octave voice, so this is uh, the same part as he's singing, uh, but recorded an octave lower. And that's something which is just going to get softly blended, blended in underneath the main voice. So let's take a listen to the main voice in the chorus, and you'll hear that there's quite a lot of distortion on it already, partly just because he's overloading the capsule of the microphone, and partly the way that his, his voice is saturating as he sings the part. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reset. Now you can hear there's a lot of proximity effect in that microphone. You're getting a lot of that kind of lower mid build up. Kind of sounds like he's singing through cotton wool. Um, so for me, I think with vo with vocals, I found the best approach is to stick to this subtractive EQ um, methodology. And you can see my moves that I've done here on the on the voice are very much cutting low end, cutting the lower mids, focusing on this kind of more radio speaker-esque frequency around 1K and cutting some of that, cutting again up in the more kind of presence peaks. So you can see I'm just cutting away loads of the voice to hopefully leave something that sounds a lot more balanced. So uh, I'll show you what it sounds like without and then win. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reset. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reset. So you can hear that's really cleared his voice up a lot. It's kind of decongested it a lot. And for me, the problem frequencies often are in these areas, you know, you're three to 500, seven to 1K, or maybe a little bit more like here, then you're two to 3K area. Those are the kind of typical areas where I found that, um, that really loud vocals often need to be tamed. And certainly like this low mid area is something which when we get to the, the more quieter vocals is gonna need a lot of attention to get right. Moving on from the EQ, I've chosen to hit it with some fairly heavy FET style compression from um, Slate Digital again, using this kind of Blue Stripe-esque compressor with attack and release on full. Now, I, people use all sorts of different settings on these compressors for, vo for vocals. I like to have the attack all the way up when I use an 1176 or a derivation of it. I find that if you turn the attack back, uh, yes, you get this nice percussive element to the voice, but I also find that you tend to get um, quite a lot of S being exaggerated. And as you'll see um, through the compression stages on the voice, one of the things I'm really trying to minimize is the amount of S that's coming through or, or make it sound natural without having to resort to kind of unnatural de-essing. So keeping the attack on full on this kind of compressor for me does a really good job of making sure the voice sounds very smooth. I'll show you what that's doing now by uh, playing it to you first without compression and then including the compressor. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reset. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reset. 
So you can hear that that's really gluing his voice in. Um, that's starting to make the voice sound very non-dynamic, which is a good thing because he's got to sing up against these very distorted guitars that are just basically flat line as far as uh, volume goes. Next up, I've got another round of compression, but this is um, a really important one to my process. Again, I'm using a fab filter plug in the Pro C2, put it in the vocal mode. Um, the really cool thing with this plugin is that you can EQ the side chain. So this is what the compressor is acting on. Um, it's not actually EQing the signal that you're hearing, but what I love to do with this compressor on, vo on vocals is to heavily emphasize the high frequency. So you can see here I'm boosting 15 dB at 8, well, 9K. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because when you compress in more typical ways with normal compressors, you find that the S's can get really out of control. Going into the compressor, these S's are generally very quiet when you see them on the waveform. So therefore they don't get turned down in volume alongside the rest of the, the sounds that the vocalist is making. And they come out of the other side sounding way louder by comparison um, to the rest of the vocal. So that's why you end up needing to use de-essers and get creative to, to then cut back those S's. However, if you've got a plugin like this where you can heavily emphasize those high frequencies, you can end up with a compression where the S's are treated very similarly to the rest of the vocal sound and therefore don't come out sounding way out of whack in comparison. So this is a really important part of, um, of my vocal processing to date. I really love this trick. It generally means that you don't need to use a de -esser on your vocals, which I really like. I hate hearing kind of lispy sounding vocals. I'll show you what this sounds like. I'm also using this just for general compression. For me, with a aggressively sung vocal like this, it's just about getting as much compression as you can possibly get onto there in order that it sounds completely pinned and really aggressive. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reserve. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reserve. So this is also giving you quite a big volume boost, which makes it more difficult to hear. Uh, but essentially, this is giving us just a next level of um, flatlining on the vocal. But hopefully you can hear that the percussive T's and the S's are not getting overemphasized when they come out of this compressor. And that's really due to this, um, this high-end boost in the side chain. So that's kind of where I end up on my individual track processing. So there's some compression on the way in, we've got some EQ, then we've got two more stages of compression. And as you'll see, there's going to be another stage of compression on top of that, all to try and just get this vocal to be as non-dynamic as possible and to sound really full and upfront all of the time. However, there's also a bit of ambience needed to get this vocal to sound the way I like to hear a vocal, you know, so it's got some sustain and body in the mix. So I'm going to start with a little bit of delay. Got a, uh, a dual echo here with two quarter note delays, so we've got a kind of a wide um, delay, but it's the same delay time on both sides. You can see here that I'm cutting a lot of low and top end out of this, again, just so that it's not interacting too much with the original vocal and just kind of providing a bed of sustain in between the words. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reserve. Something which I'm also doing at the moment is I'm using a very similar technique to what I used on the verse pad synth to cut out um, that kind of low mid build up on the delay trails too on the voice. So I'm again got a mid cut here going on at 450 hertz more or less, but only on the mid channel. And that's going to push this delay further out to the sides and mean that the voice doesn't end up kind of getting masked by its own delays. Moving on to reverb, I found this preset in Logic Space Designer a while ago and it served me really well across a load of mixes. It's called Hard Ambience and it's just um just a really good sound for a reverb on a voice for me. It's um it's not particularly long, it's not like really lush sounding, but it does a good job of giving a sense of ambience and length to the voice without being kind of too dark and muddying up other things and not being too zingy either. So here's what uh, the voice sounds like. I'll, I'll boost the, the reverb up a little bit so you can really hear it. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reserve. I really like that. It's kind of almost got like a gated feel to it. Like it's there and then it drops away really quickly. So I like the sound of this verb, but little goes a long way. I try not to rely too heavily on the verb. It can make things sound a little bit dingy if you're not careful. So the vocal with the EQ, compression, delay and verb on it sounds like this. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reserve. 
And then we have the same thing on the um, vocal double and triple, just that they are a lot quieter in the mix. I think I've got, yeah, I've got them 10 dB quieter and they're panned out a little bit to the side. So when you hear the three uh, performances of the same part together, it sounds like this. I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reserve. So you're just getting that really wide, full, um, just great commercial vocal sound that way. I also like to apply a bit of processing to the submix of these chorus vocals. So I found that upon putting these vocals into the mix, it sounded a little bit thin and edgy. So I found myself cutting just a little bit around, well, I guess about 3K, boosting a little bit of body back in. But these are really small moves, you know, minus 1.5 dB and plus 1 dB, just to smooth the vocal a little bit. Um, I also found a couple of frequencies that need notching in his voice too. It's really normal that vocalists might have um, these kind of very strong resonant frequencies that are related to the dimensions of their throat when they're singing. Um, and particularly when they're pushing really hard, they can get quite abrasive. So I found a couple here that I wanted to uh, cut. I'll show, you, I'll show you what this uh, vocal sounds like without and then with, with those notch filters. Hey, I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reserve. And it's a subtle difference and it's not on every word. Uh, if I was doing a particularly conscientious job, I might go and automate those cuts onto just the points where they're necessary. But I don't feel either that they're particularly doing anything bad to the vocal by leaving them on all the time. Finally, on the chorus vocal bus, I'm using another instance of our smash and grab compressor. Again, set to the overhead mode, which I'd say is a good overall mode if you want to try using this compressor on non-drum uh, instruments. So here I'm going to use a little bit on the voice. Um, this is going to give me a little bit of extra control, just volume-wise, because we've got a couple of extra vocals popping in and out, and I don't want the voice volume to be changing around too much as that happens, nor do I want to be having to automate to an extreme. So um, I'm doing some fairly heavy compression, but then I'm blending back a bit of the dry signal in, so it doesn't actually sound like a kind of crazy compressed vocal. Hey, I found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence reserve. I never needed it like I do now. Like I do now. And that's those chorus vocals taken care of. Moving to the verse, as I mentioned, a little bit of a different treatment required here. Uh, it's not world's world's different, but you can see I'm cutting a load of low end out of the voice here because he's just singing at a much softer dynamic. So I'll show you what the, uh, the raw vocal sounds like. All bottled up, thoughts leave me out of touch. By applying this EQ, we're gonna get rid of a lot of that kind of built up proximity effect. All bottled up, thoughts leave me out of touch. This time I'm only going to use one stage of compression and it's going to be the one with our high frequency emphasis. It's a slightly different setting, you know, this is all just kind of done on the fly. But similarly I'm using the vocal mode of this Pro C2 um, with fast attack and release settings. I'll show you what that sounds like. All bottled up, thoughts leave me out of touch. Searching in what brings them to the surface. So, I mean, I'm compressing pretty hard here. We're looking at like 15 dB of compression at times, sometimes a little bit more. But I really like how this compressor sounds um, surprisingly transparent given that. It's got a kind of variable ratio. Um, and it's just very well designed, this compressor. It sounds great on voice. So um, that's doing a very good job of leveling out the vocal without making it sound too constricted. But what I really like to do on these softer sung vocals is to use a multi-band compressor as well, which is gonna kick in when there's kind of too much body on the voice, but also not mean that you have to EQ out too much low mids from the vocals and end up with some notes sounding thin and other ones sounding just about right. So here I've got the multi-band compressor set to be on most of the time, but it's really gonna ensure that the low mids are just kept in check all of the time. 
all bottled up. Thoughts leave me out of touch. Searching in what brings them to the surface. I'm using the same delays and reverbs that I used on the chorus vocals, just in slightly different quantities to fill out a bit of space. So that leaves us with this sound. All bottled up. Thoughts leave me out of touch. Searching. So we're starting to get close to a really good vocal sound for this. I did just find that within the sibilances, there are some pretty harsh frequencies going on. And these are the same frequencies that I notched out of the chorus vocal. So they go quite a long way on this verse to make sure that the, um, the kind of ch sounds and the sh, s, all of those sounds don't have uh, too much kind of peaky information in there in the way of very specific resonant frequencies. And I also found that a little bit more low mid control was necessary too, like a kind of 500 hertz cut. And with all of that in place, we kind of end up with the final uh, vocal sound during the verse. Up, thoughts leave me out of touch. Searching in what brings them to the surface. As far as the double goes, it's very subtle in this part. I don't want a very obviously doubled vocal sound because I want it to sound quite intimate. However, I'm using the same processing and I'm using this uh, Sound Toys Micro Shift plugin to stereoize it a little bit. Uh, so that it kind of sits out to the sides of the main vocal a little bit. I like this technique when you've got a single double. It can be really nice to give the vocal a bit more width uh, when you don't have a, a triple like we did in the chorus. So, so here's how the double sounds with the uh, stereo widener applied to it. All bottled up, thoughts leave me out of touch. Searching in what brings them to the surface. If I make it too loud, the doubles kind of chorusing effect is going to make it sound a little bit out of tune. So it has to be really quite quiet in the mix. I think I had it about 12 dB quieter than the main vocal there. Uh, I also set up a little channel here with a vocal delay throw on it. And what that is, it's a channel that just has uh, a nice signal chain for a very airy sounding um, delay throw, essentially. We've got our main delay here, courtesy of Echo Boy, a memory man, kind of very analog, rolled off sounding um, delay with quite a lot of modulation to it. But I'm taking all the low end out of it that I can with the plugin. And I've, I've left it with a load of feedback too. And then throwing that into a reverb, this great reverb from Valhalla called the Vintage Verb, which again I'm cutting low end from. With these elements, it's really important to keep you know, the low end and low mid out so that these sounds can just be airy and sit on top of the music uh, instead of kind of bogging down the main vocal sound. So we've got a delay into a reverb. I'm then using a compressor on it because what that will mean is that there isn't as much of a drop off in volume through the delay repeat. So the initial delay repeat, which is going to be the loudest, is actually going to get compressed down in volume. And then the compressor is gradually going to compress less and less on each sequential repeat. And you end up with a much more even sound. Um, that's a nice little technique, I think, compressing your, your delays and reverbs can be a really cool sound. And then finally, I'm cutting out even more low end and low mids to just make this a very airy sound. And what you can do once you've got that set up is you just copy, you just chop out a little bit from your lead vocal and drag that bit of audio up onto your delay track and you've got a ready-made vocal throw. And it means you don't have to clutter up your vocal with a, like a, a reverb or delay that's very long, that's just there all the time. You don't have to write all this stuff in in automation. I, I find this to be a really good workflow for creating these kinds of delay throws. I'll show what it sounds like just on its own and then what it sounds like in context. Hold up. Thoughts leave me out of touch. Searching in what brings them to the surface. I also used the same channel during the chorus, just to highlight, I think it was only one word in each repeat of the chorus vocal. You can see it up here. Found my nerve at the bottom of my confidence. So you can hear that really long trail on uh, on the word nerve. So it's a nice way of adding a little bit of differences onto certain notes and just highlighting them more. The final thing to look at would be the harmony vocals. And instead of treating each of these individually, 
uh, I decided instead to do as much as I could on the bus processing. Now, Robin actually bounced down these harneys, which are made up of many different takes, into stereo files that are kind of pre-mixed in volume, which makes things quite a lot easier for me as a mix engineer. I, I like it when clients do that. So, you know, just as one example, here's harmony one during the chorus. Found my nerve. And there's like a held note version of that that fills in the gap. Found my nerve. And all of these harmonize with the main chorus vocals. So in terms of EQ on harmony vocals, I think it's really important to make sure they don't have low end that's getting in the way of the, the other voices particularly. Here I've high passed at about 150 hertz, but I feel like it could have probably even been more aggressive. We don't need to hear the low end of those, those notes. The only things would be perhaps on those held harmonies, it would be nice that uh, they don't sound too thin since they're kind of standing on their own rather than being sung at the same time. So cutting some, some low mids at the same time there. Here I've gone for a lot more multiband compression than I typically do on individual tracks. And the reason for this is because we've got lots of different types of vocals all going through the same bus. And this multiband compressor is basically gonna make sure that each range of the, of the vocal is being maintained well. So we've got one band looking at your kind of 100 up to 400 hertz. We've got another band looking between that 400 up to, I guess about 1.5K. And then from there on up to about 6K or so. And all of these are set to be active, but most of the time. So they're basically just trimming that vocal and keeping it very much in place. I'll show you actually what the vocal sounds like with no processing and then engage the EQ and multiband comp. I found my nerve, my nerve, confidence reserve. I do now. So you can see that EQ and multiband comp really neatened things up there. Um, moving on, I've got a bit of compression. I'm using my trusty Pro C2 here. Similar deal with the high frequency emphasis. So essentially what we have here is two mono compressors active instead of one stereo compressor, which is really good because we've got loads of different vocals panned all over the place. And if the right vocal pops out, it's going to compress down the left vocal if it's set in your kind of standard stereo links mode. So by keeping the two sides separate, the two sides can compress at just the amount that's needed for each side to maintain a nice even compressed sound. So compression applied to all of the harmony vocals together sounds like this. I found my nerve, my nerve, confidence reserve. So that instantly has made them way more punchy and up front. Um, I've used a gain plug-in here just to cut some volume. You'll have seen a couple of other gain plugins being used in my uh, in my mix in general just to trim the, the relative gains to where I want them. And I'm doing here actually the same move that I've been doing on the, the pads and on the vocal delays, where basically I'm cutting out that low mid content just in the middle. Uh, these vocals are all generally pretty hard panned on the harmony vocals, but there's still some kind of low frequencies in the middle that are gonna be eating into the space that's being taken up by the, the lead vocals. So that's a cool move. And then this guy here is actually uh, affecting all of the spectrum, it's not just in the middle. And I'm using that to cut around 1K to just give a softer sound to the backing vocals. So, so I'll start by playing this without this mid-side EQ engaged and then with the mid-side EQ engaged again while it's playing. I found my nerve, my nerve, confidence reserve. So you can hear that's instantly given us like a super stereo kind of vibe to the backing vocals. And I'm rounding all of that out with a little bit of delay and reverb uh, just to sit this back into the mix a little bit alongside the rest of the vocals. And our final harmony vocal sound is like this. I found my nerve, my nerve, confidence reserve. So listening just from kind of midway through the verse into the chorus with the vocal soloed so you can hear what I'm doing there. Um, let's just take a little quick listen. Trace, I know one day that I will let go But not today, I found my nerve At the bottom of my confidence reserve I never needed it like I do now This ego's torn apart In my head I'm right back to the start I see a change now I knew. 
So I've taken you through my process of how I mix this track. Uh, let's just take a little listen so you can hear how I mix the final product and how all these different elements fit together. We hope that you've enjoyed this mixed walkthrough and who knows, we might even be doing another one sometime soon. But in the meantime, for more information, head over to getgooddrums.com.